Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are here for the first time, my name is Melissa Reed, and I am a mixed media intuitive artist from Pennsylvania. And today we're continuing with some things that I've been doing in my previous videos. Uh, this is going to be another kind of like test piece for the larger piece that I was talking about that I'm going to be entering into an exhibit here within the next few weeks. So what I'm doing right here is using one of those six by 12 inch boards it's a cradled panel and it comes as raw wood and I just went ahead and gessoed it. And now I am just laying down some raw umber, burnt sienna, and grumbacher red. The last piece that I did, I started with shades of blue and put red on top. This time I'm going to be doing the opposite just to change it up a little bit. Um, if you haven't seen my last video, check it out. This piece could be considered a companion piece to that one, but it is also, also a standalone piece. But mostly the purpose here is just to test out some techniques that I want to use in the larger exhibit piece that I'm going to be doing. So it's possible to test some ideas and do experiments and still end up with a finished piece, which is kind of what I was doing also. So I guess I kind of had two goals in mind here. Once I let that base layer dry, I am putting on some Artist Loft teal and turquoise, and those are pretty thick, concentrated, opaque colors, so I just sprayed a little bit of water on them to thin them out a bit, and I'm using my color shaper to move the paint around a little bit on top of the board. And as you can see with the water, it is becoming a little more translucent and just kind of moving around a bit more on the board, I'm able to get some nice hard lines where I want them by pulling the paint in one straight motion with the color shaper. And I'm just getting some different qualities of line and just some visual texture on the board for this layer. These pieces that I do are all about layering. It's all about visual texture. And in my opinion for these pieces, the more layers, the better. You can have overkill on that, but it's, it's important also to know when to stop for that reason. But I do like a lot of layers in my work. I think it brings visual interest in a way that is very uniquely yours. And, you know, two artists can apply these techniques almost identically, but still get different results because you are just introducing so many different layers that it gives it a truly unique look. I'm also introducing a little bit of the Windsor Newton um, Prussian blue here as well. That's the darker blue shade that I'm applying now. And again, just doing this to get some different values and kind of wanted to mimic the colors that I used in my last piece while doing them inversely. So I had put these darker shades on the base and then put the red on top like I'd mentioned before. And so now I'm just applying a little bit of them on top of the red just to get a similar color scheme, but done in a different way. So I'm going to be doing some different techniques in this video. Um, actually here, I'm going to be doing a little bit of gel printing. And I was I thought about editing this part out because I don't actually end up using any of the prints that I'm making here in this piece, but I decided to go ahead and keep it in because some of these techniques I've been meaning to try out anyway, and um, I thought, why not put them in here and you can just see them. I'm certain I'll end up using them at some point. So that wasn't technically a gel print. I was using the plate on that particular piece that I just did there just to hold my tissue paper in place. But what I'm doing here is I applied some of that Prussian blue and I just have um, that plastic sheet I got at the Dollar Tree and it just has a bunch of little dots on it. It makes a cool dot pattern that I like to use a lot in my mixed media collage pieces when I am doing collage. And you can get a couple of different qualities. Um, the first one when I just rolled the paint over top of that sheet with my brayer and then used it almost like a stamp to press down, you get very um, nicely indicated points, just very small dots. This way, when I put the paint on the gel plate and press the texture into it, it of course removes some of that and leaves the kind of area that you're about to see here when I pull this up. It's going to be a larger dot pattern in the blue 
And when I laid that red down, you're going to see what I mean right here. But it's a way to also, if you use both of those in a piece, not just because they're dots, but because you made them out of the same material, it's another way to bring continuity to a piece if you would use them together. But like I said, I didn't end up using any of them in this piece, but I most likely will be using that technique in my larger piece that I keep talking about, which I will show you at the end. Stick around to the very end. I have some progress pics. I've got a, a picture of the whole entire piece, and then I have a couple of detail pictures on there too that I think you might enjoy seeing. Um, I'm really happy with the way that thing is turning out. I cannot wait to see how it gets finished. And I'm not gonna have to wait long because that deadline is in like two weeks, I just realized. So I'm not quite in panic mode yet, but gonna be getting there pretty soon. So. It may come to pass that one of these videos in the next week or two is actually me working on that just so that I have the time to do that. But I think it'll be interesting because you'll be able to see some of these techniques that I've been doing in the last few videos actually come to life, <clears throat> excuse me, on the larger piece. Okay, so here, if you've been with me, you've seen some of my burned pieces. This is wood burned paper. And this is an old piece that I had lying around and I thought I would use it to try to um, make some marks like as a stencil so I'm just rolling some paint over top of the paper there and so obviously what's going to print is just the negative space there the little holes and it's interesting I kind of like it not exactly what I was going for but this when I brayer the paint down onto the gel plate and then lay the stencil down over top of it lifting up what is in the negative space onto this tissue paper, what it's going to leave is an imprint of the stencil. And that's what I was hoping for. And like I said, I don't use this in the piece today, but it will definitely be used in a future piece, whether it's the large piece for the exhibit or something else, but I love that quality. I don't know, I have this thing with circles. I'm sure you've noticed by now if you have seen any of my other videos or been on my Instagram or Facebook page or my Etsy store, a lot of my work has circles in it. It always have, it always has. I don't know really, I, I can't really explain it. I just like that quality. It speaks to me and I almost always go to that in my artwork. But what I'm doing here is um, I had the blue paint down on the plate there and I'm using a little bit of the matte gel medium to lift it up and that works similarly to paint when you're pulling prints. Um, it didn't work so well on that first one that I just pulled there because I don't think I left it on the plate long enough. So I'm going over it again right now with a little bit more of the matte gel medium and I'm putting just a bit less on this time and I'm going to leave the tissue paper on the plate for just a moment longer and then I was able to pull up and get the results that I was looking for. And you'll be able to see here that I was able to pull up most of that design. And that is really cool and I will definitely be using that again. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is adding a little bit of um, white paint, titanium white actually, to a little bit of the matte medium. Because what I'm trying to get here is a very, very pale translucent print like I did before with the blue ones, but in white, because I'm planning on possibly trying to collage with this, cutting out the print and seeing if I can apply it to a darker background and if I will get the kind of like white circular pattern to come through. And I don't really see why that wouldn't work. I just, like I said, I didn't end up using it. And when I pull this print, um, like I'm about to do right now. I'm adding a little bit more, after I let that dry, I'm adding a little bit more of the matte medium down there and just going over it. And I'm gonna pull that up with another sheet of tissue paper here. You're not going to really be able to see the print um, because it is very light and very translucent and because I am doing it on tissue paper, which is kind of white to begin with. You can see it in person, um, but you can't really see it on the page that I lifted up, which is why I didn't bother to slow down 
the video there because you weren't going to be able to see anything anyway. But I did a few of those experiments because I wanted to see what would happen and I'm glad I did them even though I didn't use them in this piece because I think I got some valuable information from them and I mean maybe that's a technique that you might want to try out too so hopefully you got a little bit of value out of that too. So that's why I decided to leave that little mini gel printing session in the video even though I didn't necessarily use any of those today. What I am doing here though is going on that same theme and mixing some of that Artist's Loft teal with some of the matte medium. And this is a stencil that I made several months ago and I just made it out of a piece of drawing paper and I cut these shapes out of it and then I put a couple of coats of uh, gloss gel medium on it to make it hardy and because otherwise it's just a piece of paper and you wouldn't really be able to get a lot of use out of it. But I've had this thing now since I want to say like maybe September, August or September, and it's still going strong. Um, so I'm just using this over top and you can see how translucent that paint is because I mixed it with the medium. And that is a quality that I love. I love being able to see patterns through other patterns. It's just, and I sound like a broken record here, but it's just another way to create texture and multiple layers, which is very visually interesting. I added a little bit of the dot pattern just by rolling some of that paint over top of the that texture plate that I had there. And now I'm going in with some of my burned sheets. These are uh, tissue paper, and if you ever try to do this, the best way to do tissue paper with the wood burning tool is to have several sheets. I think I did five or six sheets at a time and had them taped together. Um, otherwise, it's just so flimsy and you're going to just end up, I don't know, burning your house down and also not getting the results that you want. So <laughs> don't do either of those things. Um, but anyway, I had some of these on hand so I didn't have to stop and uh, make them along the way. But if you are interested in seeing the process, I believe it is two videos ago, possibly in the last one as well. So check out my last few videos and there's there's an example of me making those sheets and also I use them in both of my last videos as well. But anyway, I'm just using a little bit of the matte gel medium to glue down those sheets. And once I got them all trimmed up and I actually went ahead and painted the sides black, I think before I came back to this segment, just because I like to do that sometimes to see how it's going to look finished. I just went ahead here with a pencil and drew some circle patterns kind of going in a wave from the bottom up to the top of the piece. It's going to be really hard for you to see right now because the graphite um, is not showing up very well on the camera, but you'll see in the next couple of steps what's going to happen with these. Um, I'm going in here with a little bit of metal leaf adhesive and it's going to go on white. You'll be able to see it there. It's just like a kind of a glue and I'm filling in each one of those circles that I just went ahead and drew on there. How this works, if you've never used it, it's for like gold leaf or metal foil. You lay it down and give it about a 30 minute cure time. Although I had it kind of thick in a few places and I think I ended up having to give this about an hour uh, before it was dry and ready to do the next step. Once you let that cure, it will be clear um, and extremely tacky. And what this does is it will capture the gold foil or the gold leaf, whatever you're using, the metal foil, and adhere it down to the adhesive that you put down there. Try not to get it on your hands or anywhere because it is just a giant pain in the rear to try to get off of anything. And even with soap and water, that stuff kind of stays around for a while. So just be a little careful with it. So I have a couple sheets of the gold, no, this is actually copper foil that I'm using there. Plus I have a, I keep a little container of all of the crumbs from when I use it because I don't like to waste it. And I dumped some of those on there too, because for something like this, that's perfect. And it's exactly why I keep those. And you can reuse them and not have a lot of waste because they will adhere just as well as the whole sheets do. The sheets are great if you're doing a large area or if you want something to be pretty consistent in the gilding, but this was smaller areas and it didn't need to be necessarily super consistent. So I just took a very soft brush and 
went over the top of it and then a little bit of a stiffer brush to clean up in between those circles because some of them they were close together and the gilding wasn't coming off and so then I've got that nice little curly Q wave going up the left hand side I decided that it needed a little bit brightening so I went in with some just straight grum rocker excuse me grumbacher red paint which is one of my absolute favorite colors and just filled in a little bit here and there not really any rhyme or reason just kind of going wherever the moment struck just to brighten up some of the spots and I end up using a little more of the paint um, coming up here in different ways because I thought that the piece was getting the blue was a little darker than I really wanted it to be so I went in with the paint shaper here and smoothed out what I had already done and just went ahead and put a little bit more of that paint down on the board just to kind of go over some of the blue areas and even some of the burned areas. I just thought it needed it. I don't know. Artistic decision, I guess. So this piece I'm going to just say right now is not one of my favorites. It's not bad. I don't love it. I don't hate it. But that kind of wasn't the point. It was always meant to be a test piece. And I ended up not disliking it too much at the end. But I, at this point, I'm looking at it going, okay, I have no idea where to go to finish this right now. So I thought what I would do is make a couple of circles and use another technique that I had wanted to try that I am definitely going to be using on my larger piece to um, make these spherical planetoid looking shapes and I'm going to be using a stencil which I will put a link in the description box if I can find it. I believe I got this pack of stencils on eBay a while back. Not sure if they're still they're still available but I will look for the link and post it in the description along with links to any of the other products that I have used in this video for you. Um, but anyway I've got a little bit of Payne's Gray, which is a nice gray that has a lot of blue tones to it, mixed in my little cup there with a hefty amount of the matte gel medium. And again, I do this to create a very translucent, almost glaze of paint. And you'll see here in a minute, there's the stencil that I was talking about. It's just more circles again because I love them. And the circles in this stencil mimic my burn pieces so well, it almost looks like, it looks like they could have just been made by the same place, but I assure you I made the burned papers and this came out of a, a like collection of stencils, but they work really well together. Excuse that big beam of sunlight. As you can see, I shot this video several different times a day and apparently this is a really bad time of day to be doing this, but just bear with me here. So I am going, just on the inside of that large circle that I drew and irregularly placing down some of that Payne's Gray where the inside of that circle is going to be. And I say irregularly because I don't ever like to follow one of these stencils precisely because then it just becomes a big square of pattern, which is not something that I typically want. I mean, I suppose there could be situations where you might want that but that's not what I'm going for here so I am basically just kind of laying it down swiping my color shaper over top of it just to lay down a little bit of that pattern and that's kind of it so I decide at that point that I want another circle shape to be up at the top of the piece on the top right hand side so I'm going to go ahead in and lay down another one of those and kind of just do the same type of thing where I'm picking up the stencil and just laying down a little bit of the thinned out Payne's Gray. And once I have both of these shapes down and I have all of the stenciled pattern in them that I like, I'm going to go ahead with the rest of the Payne's Gray and I'm not going to change the tone of it at all. 
And I'm going to kind of fill in those circles that I made. I think this finishes the piece nicely. It gives a little bit of balance, a little bit of darkness to the right hand side of the piece and kind of just brings it all together. We've got the circular pattern throughout the whole piece and now we've got the larger planetoid circular shapes in a little bit of a darker color on the right hand side which just finishes everything off nicely. And here's the finished piece. I don't have a name for it yet, but I will hopefully come up with one before I post it on my Etsy store this week. But yeah, I hope you got some value out of these techniques and thank you for stopping by again. And hey, if you have a second, please subscribe to my channel to keep up with all of my future videos and give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to stick around to see my progress pics from my large piece. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for stopping in. This first shot is just a whole shot of the whole entire piece, and I'm going to go in with a couple of detail picks here coming up. This next shot is a detail of the larger planetoid piece, which is similar to what I just showed you in the piece that I did in this video. And this next piece is just another shot of both of those pieces plus one of my burned spears. Check out next week's video and I will have more progress pics for you. I'm hoping to get quite a bit of work done on this in the next few days, but we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks again all. Take care.